So Calgary, you're here, coach, general manager, captain. I mean, so many changes from a year ago. It's crazy to think that, oh yeah, and just do it, do it again. It's been a wild 24 months. No one wants to come back. Suddenly guys may come back for this, uh, for this team. And yeah, there's still obviously question marks about what happens at the end of this year. But as you sit here, uh, whether, whether, I don't know what, it, what it, morale's high. Totally different place. Morale's high for what that's worth. I don't know if it's going to be worth anything, but it feels pretty powerful right now. Yeah. You could just tell being at practice yesterday, banging sticks on the glass, celebrating goals, smiling. Jonathan Huberto, we talked to him, and frankly speaking, I'll drop next week. He said for the first time, I think in his life, like going back to minor hockey, he goes, I didn't want to come to the rink. Last year. Yeah. It looked like that. For the whole team. I mean, when you talk about the potential exodus this past summer that ultimately didn't end up happening, they were so tired, so beaten down that they felt like they had no other place to go yeah. except out of here. I wish Rhett was on for this. And it's not to like pin him into a corner. He's not here, but he's been very, very defensive of Daryl. And why? I think there's a, well, because I think there's a lot of blood on the hands of guys that took money and didn't play that hard. And like he's right about that, but I think that he's absolving Daryl of a lot of really weird things that happened last year, right from training camp. Well, and, and I think he's, and I, I I agree to a certain extent. I think that there's too much stock being in being put into the fun element of things winning's fun they, they didn't win enough yeah wait till you year. lose a few see um, how fun it yeah, is. yeah we'll, we'll go on but, a, but the problem last year was they were like four and one or five one and two out of the gate and it was already like he was tighter barking. Than a snare drum yeah, yeah six games in i remember they were four and two yeah they and it was Edmonton like the sky the was play. falling yeah it, 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 listen daryl's a daryl's a very he's a hall of fame coach he's a hall of fame coach there's no no one can point at his resume and is say he? Oh, absolutely he is will he go in the hall yeah I don't know what the criteria for coaching is, but like he's top 10 in a lot of stuff and the games coached aren't that high. Like he's, he goes, he's one of the winningest coaches in the history of this league. Does Wins the stink of this year. So Mike Babcock was a hall of fame coach. Was he? Yes. Olympic old medal, well, Stanley cup. No, he won a cup a, on a loaded team and did nothing else. Setting a precedent. That doesn't matter for coaches, right? That doesn't matter. At, I at think cups of, matter a lot for coaches in the hall. No, you're saying on a, on a stacked team. What that's what I'm saying. Cups, championships, Years down the road, they don't say, yeah, but how good was the team? Did he really coach them? Was it his coaching prowess that led them to victory? No, he's got gold medals. He's got mm -hmm. cups. Games coached. Wins. He, okay. I'm it's not gonna, undeniable I, that he was on a Hall of Fame track. I, okay. I think so. Yeah. Is he now? I th I don't think so, but you do. Brett mentioned like. that before he, last week, I think, when this all came down. He says, I, is, I don't think he gets in now. And does the stink of this from Daryl Sutter prevent him from getting in i think it's different uh, he's done more without yeah I, I feel like one bad year doesn't sink any coach and also we gotta see how it plays out if they suck again this year that absolves daryl a bit doesn't it there's no i mean as, who knows what the future brings but there's no like there's chaos and there's the temperature and the mood and all of that there was no the, going off the rails there's no instance where of wrongdoing or there were a lot of <laughs> there was no no i would say a lot of very borderline it's taking a shit but there's no scandal i don't I, we talked frank every week last year and it was like you had a very early clear vibe that things were not good in calgary right from the get-go between the new star player and the coach i think it was the third show i ever did with you guys third show third week of the season right but the the i mean it's a list that is a mile long of coaches who have battled with star players. But what the about when in, you battle with every player? The coach in your town. What, how about the story from Tyler to Foley this summer? Well, what was it? For did, you, one? The, the, did you, did you see the podcast? You know, they're no score 10 minutes into the game and Daryl's walking up and down the bench saying, Oh, Marky doesn't have it tonight. Uh, you guys got to go to Winsport tomorrow. Yep, yeah, and and Vladar, go get ready. Guys are like, zero zero. There's no score. We're out mm -hmm. shooting them. Yeah, I know. 
There, I, I'm, I I'm not, there, there I am not smoking, defending there isn't his, a smoking gun, you're his right. methods, but there, the reason that Mike won't go in if he doesn't is because of this. Is because of what happened in Columbus. I, I no, I get exactly what you're saying. I'm just there's a there's a really thin line of what you're talking about. Mental warfare is mental warfare. Yeah. Scrolling through a player's phone is an invasion of privacy. Treating right, but, players the way that you do is still mental warfare. I agree, but I, I the the phone thing with Babcock that's a specific incident that I think if it that would be the roadblock yeah, if he doesn't gun. go in. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head, like Scotty Bowman. My guess is he was a bit of a, a bit of a tyrant over the years. You hear mm -hmm. a lot of stuff about Scotty Bowman, mm -hmm. guys like Pat Quinn. They were hard it's on a players. different time. Al yeah. Arbor hard on players, but yet they are some of the most Winning storied coaches. coaches in the game. Minus a controversy or a scandal. I think Daryl Sutter goes into the hall. Okay. I agree I, I'm not There's saying no you're wrong. wrong. I just yeah. asked the question. Yeah. Does, does the the stink of this, does it stay on him for a while? Well, and I just sort of like the difference in my mind is that Daryl won with a six seed and an eight seed and dominated in those two years. They won the cup. Mike Babcock won with a team that was probably a Vegas favorite to win a cup. What I think it was almost pre-cap with Detroit. Nope. 2008. Okay. So not pre-cap, but it was like, yeah, you had the fuck, how many Hall of Famers did he have? It's like he did a good job. He won, but it's like, I'm not convinced that some other coach couldn't have won with that team. Just like they couldn't have won goal with Team Canada. I am convinced Daryl was the reason LA won two cups. Hmm. And I, I wonder what Drew Doughty would say to that. Well, I mean, I was going to say, I or think, Dustin Brown, but look, or he, Justin Williams or all these other yeah, guys. So, that so are, when they were out of the playoffs mid season and he replaced what Andy Murray and they fucking steamrolled everyone they saw that year. Like, is that not Daryl? They might not like him, but you got to give him credit. Terry Murray. Terry Murray. Thank you. Yeah. Terry Murray. Two more, too many Murrays. Eddie. Eddie Murphy. Um, anyway, back to the Flames. They they re-sign, they trade to Foley, they bring in Sharon Govich. You might be being from where being in Philadelphia, you would have seen Sharon Govich obviously more than we would have at out here. You're gonna like him. Yeah, give us a bit of a report card from where okay, you said. This is the easiest way to explain Sharon Govich. Has wheels, shoots the puck challenged hockey iq yes because if he isn't he's a star if he has hockey iq with the wheels and that shot he's a star here's what i would argue that is the very best player to play with jonathan huberto it's duclair light we talked about someone's it. gonna put the puck on his stick your only job bud you have one job shoot the puck yeah get open shoot we don't even want you thinking mm -hmm. don't don't start thinking <laughs> But he's he can skate, and his shot is elite. Twenty five goals, second year in the league. That's not nothing. So it, you've got Huberto, Lindholm, Sharon Govich. Now, can you go? Just I wanted to make sure I heard that correctly. He's the most talented Huberto. Has play, what was that? He's the perfect guy to play with Huberto. Yeah, like you couldn't draw it up any better for a stylistic fit to play with Huberto. And benefiting Huberdo or benefiting him? Benefiting the Calgary Flames. Okay. Both. Yeah. The type of player he's had success with. I just thought you said he's the, he's the perfect fit that Huberdo's ever played with. No, no, not ever. No, no, no. That Ever. Huberto could play with on this team. In Calgary. All right. People forget that when Huberto put up 115 points and was tied for second in league scoring two seasons ago, it wasn't anything to do with Barkov. At even strength, his most common line mates were Sam Bennett and Anthony DeClaire. Those are not superstar players, but the fit was key. And this is why we got into it last year because he's like, he has to play with Lindholm. I'm like, well, maybe he does or doesn't. What he needs to do is be with the right type of player. And they couldn't find out who that was last year because Daryl was pretty stubborn. And On that team, and I'll stand by it, it's fine when you're in Florida not playing with Barkov and the points are racking up. Mm -hmm. When you're in Calgary and it's a shit show and you're struggling and other guys are struggling, why are you not putting your top winger and your top mm. centerman together because neither one of them are playing well or getting results and the team is suffering. They hardly tried it. It was they another Daryl thing that didn't make sense. Let me ask you a way more simple question. After being the second all-star left winger, scoring the most points in NHL history in one season as a left winger, why did Jonathan Huberto spend 50-plus games as a right winger last season. Daryl. There's no 
It, it's a puzzle for sure. I I was like, it was almost like he laughed. Like I said, well, like this year, like maybe you could at least start playing on the correct side. Yeah. Last year, Daryl made that comment early in the year about Lindholm and Huberto. And it was, I'm kind of paraphrasing. I don't want to, but he said something about Lindholm is our best player and he's got to play with guys that he likes, that he likes playing with. And so whether that was actually how Lindholm felt or Daryl was like, is it a veiled shot at Lindholm? I don't know. Is it a veiled shot at Huberdo? He's taking what a is shit. It? Yeah. Um, it was a shot at everyone. Yeah. It was him against that whole team last year. It was. <laughs> it was sad because we saw it so early. And then the craziest part about last year for the Calgary Flames for me is every single thing that could go wrong did. And they still only missed the playoffs by three points. Like they almost lost their way in kind of like the Florida Panthers. Yeah. Remember the game against the Blackhawks, like 10 days left. I mean, and we can't forget that one. Cause that's yeah. the worst shift I've seen from Nazem Kadri in his entire career. And it's it was unforgivable. Close. Yeah. Yeah. The one thing though, that they I'm did, not saying that play, I'm just saying that loss. Yeah. Oh, and it was, the, I think they went like one, two who's who scored two goals that game for the Hawks. Is it Athens C or something? No, who was it? Um, was, it was someone that's like a total fringe NHL player. It was player. a guy playing with Domi that night, yeah. as I recall. And it was like, you just had your season ended by... Yeah. The one thing, to your point, the one thing that could go wrong if it did, the thing that they, which just concerns me a little bit, is they really had nothing in the way of injury problems. Markstrom didn't play well, but he was... We are led to believe he was healthy. It's only Tanev thing until the end of the year, he was healthy. Guys didn't miss. Unless you count Shillington, but yeah. And that's yeah. injury. I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah. So but if they you were take very healthy relative to the league. From game one to 82, the guys that were on that team were mostly healthy. Yeah. You can have a lot of things go right this year, but if suddenly, if you have one or two key injuries, you're, I feel like you're back in that bubble, like bubble spot again. Maybe. It's funny. Like in this market, I feel so much negativity and just people don't believe in this team because of what they watched and because you're close to it and you can't escape outside of the market. I continue to see people that are very smart hockey people saying this is a playoff team. I you think they're a playoff team. The you sports get it though, books right? are minus 200 for them to make the playoffs on Betway. You have to bet $200 to win a hundred for the flames to make the playoffs. Like that does not match the vibe around the city. And it for doesn't. good reason, because I think the people and the fans in the city, they pay closer attention. They saw last year when they're playing Dallas and Minnesota. So oh, this is not going to go well. Oh, you beat both of them. Mm. Holy shit. Let's play Anaheim. Lose at home. Lose at home. But again, it's a couple like more big wins. All right. Well, you're going to be able to do it. To your point, then it was that Chicago game. Shit them. Shit their pants. Yep. It's hard. I get why fans are not trusting of this team. I get it. I, it's just that I don't want you to give credit to the fans being smarter than sports books. The, the history of sport is that they're not right. Like the sports books are more rational. Well, than sports books are a reason fans. why they exist. There's, There's a lot a of people last money. year thought that this team was going to be better than last year than it was the year before Three years in a row. Expectations so, have been completely missed, yeah. but now there are none. Yeah. Really. I'm not saying they're right. I'm saying I get why fans would have a hard time trusting the team until they demonstrate yeah. that they can be more consistent and live up to these expectations. It's show me, show me first. Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, you want to know the word they kind of kicked around yesterday a bit? Underdog. Yeah. We're the underdog now. Uh, and the, the last two years they went to the playoffs, people don't didn't think they were good. The last two years people thought they were good, they missed the playoffs. Expectations are a thing. We talked about it in Edmonton, very different, but this team has failed to reach expectations Basically, back to like 2019 when they were the one seed against Colorado. What would they be this year? What would they? The expectation. Date. Well, that's what I'm saying is weird because in the market, people don't think this is a playoff team. Outside of the market, unanimously, it seems. People not think unanimously. They are. I, I shouldn't say that. The overwhelm, not overwhelming. The majority <laughs> of hockey people think they're a playoff team. What is your expectation of this team? I think they're six to nine in the West. So, so like kind of the same as what we thought a year ago. No, last year people had them winning the cup and winning the division. Very different than last year. You didn't. No, I'm, I'm saying the expectations. I'm asking you, what are your expectations for this team and what were they a year ago? Last year, I thought they were a top two team in the division. And this year, I think they're probably the, the third or fourth best team in the division. But that's probably still good enough for playoffs. Yeah. You want to talk about safe money with this team. Just say bubble team. Uh, they'll, yeah. be, they'll be in this fight for a playoff spot. And generally, you're going to be right. But two years ago, they won the division. It's weird, right? Like. No one saw that coming. Daryl came in and replaced Jeff Ward, and they 
played 500 hockey and didn't look that good. And it was like, here we go. You know what? It's a group of losers and they won the division. <laughs> they weren't a bubble team. They can dominate. They went through that trough where there was no playoffs. And then 2019, this team's come together. Young studs. Look at this. Win the division, win mm -hmm. the car. All right. Five games, Colorado. Snot bubbled. Oh man, we really thought we really thought this was going to be a good year, and then it wasn't. And then okay, well, it's not going to be. And then it was good. And then it's bad. That in out, in out, in out, in out. That's it's been hard to trust this friggin' and team. And that's why I just think that's God. why the city is the way it is because there's so yeah. much scar tissue. Then that's okay. Yeah. And that's honestly that's it's, actually it's, what makes it fun. That's what makes this year yeah interesting. It's going to work for this team because your point. They're they all they don't in have there. To pretend they're underdogs. They, they, it feels like they are in the city, and they're loving it. Yeah. Ryan Huska, Craig Conroy, these guys, this is this is in their wheelhouse because I do think they have something in the top seven decor yep. in the league. And they could have a goalie that's really good. Could have two. They could have three. <laughs> yeah. And they Jonathan Huberto, I think he hits at least 90 points this year. I'll write that down, Dean. I can remember it. It's a round. I have number. a feeling I might hear about it. Again yeah, you at some might. Point. Yeah, and and it's that's just based on. Pinder said last night if he gets to ninety points, he will have achieved legend status. No, I said if he gets back to a point per game, like he will be like loved in the city because that's how bad it went last year, and that's how huge the commitment is for the next eight years. Well, wasn't it the the biggest drop from one year to the next in the, the history of the league. production, yes. in the history of the league? Like people have quit on him because of how bad it looked last year. And Frank's made a lot of points of why that was the case. But until people see that, Huber, like he he said to you, like he, Calgary hasn't even seen me yet. He said Calgary has not met the real Jonathan Huber. And you know what made it worse? It'd be one thing if you came in and had that kind of a drop. You also got paid. Well, that's exactly it. So not only did the did the points go away, it's like, well, Johnny left and he had a hundred and some, but this guy came in and he had a hundred and some. So it's a saw off then you also gave him the richest contract in franchise history. You could see the logic. It was like, Johnny didn't sign here. They had the same number of points. Give him Johnny's money. We'll structure it however it needs to get done for Alan Wash to sign yeah. off. He's here, and let's just keep moving. Everything's the same. And it wasn't the same. It, it, it was culture shock for him. I think it was Daryl shock. Market, Daryl. So you got, okay, so you give this guy the biggest contract in Flames history. When was he used late in games? He didn't. They just roll. They just roll. Never. Daryl rolls. How do you then turn around and say, you didn't do it this year? Playing in a position you've never played in your career. Yeah. In a city that you've never been in, really, except for the odd Eastern West road trip, right? Yeah. One night a year. Some people will say, then give your you, balls a tug. Be, you're a pro, so you're living in a new that's city. That's what Rat would say. Get over no, it. Some, at some, some point, people. be a pro and, and, I, and dig in. I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you that's... That's facts. how he tells the story. Yeah. Yeah. I listen, I can't. Daryl's a great coach. I've talked, we've seen it. I've talked to too many people just about how awful the mood and that attitude and the atmosphere was. It was it was not a good place for people to win hockey games. It was not be, a good place for people to work. To work, yes. be good at their jobs, Beyond enjoy players. their time together. It was, it was a it was dark for sure. Toxic workplace last year. So and it's the exact opposite right now. And I know a lot of people, ah, kids today, they're soft or whatever. It's I, I don't, I don't want to work in a place where my boss is an asshole and you can't, no one wants that. It can only mean good things. Does it mean more wins? I don't know. I don't know how, even if, if the team wins more, do you look at it and just say, well, it's because it was more fun. I don't know how many how many fun victories do they get this year? Wow, they but how many miserable but how many, to work losses did they have? Yeah, how many one goal losses, how many blown third period leads, and again, still only missed mm -hmm. by three points. With the worst season that Markstrom's put up in the last half decade. What about that? We kept waiting for him to kind of find his form. We, you hear about having a kid, and we know what that's like. That's when he did. He um, found his form as soon as that kid was born. It's like, is he going to get above nine, like 900 save percentage? Nope. Going to get to. If he gets to 900, they make the playoffs, mm -hmm. which is crazy because 900 ain't a bar it's, for March. 900 is below league average. Yeah, yeah, I know. And that was. That's, you were not asking for the sun, the moon, and the stars. Just yeah. give us like a little something. And I and also then think. Ladar was getting run over by Daryl every other night. That yeah. How's that going to work?
you can't just be like, hey, call him in. Can't well, he's not okay. gonna help you at all. Huh. Well, and this year, maybe like Daryl didn't use the farm team. The GM would call up a first round prize pro- prospect. What's and he his would number ri- again? Yeah, exactly. It changed it this year. Uh, but he, he'd ride charters for two weeks and he did he didn't take advantage of players that were playing well in the American League, aka Phillips, aka Pelche, aka Dustin Wolf. He was very, very stubborn in his entire approach. And when it didn't work, he didn't use the options he had. And I think that's why guys like Connie and Tree were so frustrated because they loved a lot of the guys in that AHL team that could have been solutions. And you lose Gerald didn't use them. You lose some of those guys. You lose Phillips. Now, I don't know if he's going to be something, but you didn't find out. Mm-hmm. You Why wouldn't you? So you call a guy up and then you leave him linger as a healthy for 10 days. You know, that was actually one of the biggest. And I think I told this story last year. That was one of the biggest things that pissed the players off last year was yeah. that they could, he couldn't even give them an answer of when you're making your NHL debut. Trying you know what your out. lineup is. Can we, can we bring his mom and dad in for the game? Yeah. And it took until one of the players went to tree living and said, we need an answer because we're not allowing this to happen any this longer. Yes. That they're doing to this kid. Yeah. And the kid, and then he did that. What he did after the game, what's his number again? As a way to say to everyone else, bird, hope you're happy. That's the and there's and he played him what? What what was his ice time? Yeah, not much. Six minutes. How are you going to ever find out? I know it's so sad that you had Matthew Phillips, this incredible story. Small kid, local kid, sixth rounder, torches junior. <clears throat> like that's never happened he's gonna be here too before. Small for oh, he's going to be too small for the American League. Dominates the A. And you had all these opportunities the last two years to find out what he is at the NHL level. And instead, Craig Conroy has to make a decision this summer of how much can I give this guy? Can I give him a one-way? And you don't even know what he is because your coach was so stubborn that even in two lost seasons, you never saw him play more than three games. So there's – and then we talked about I think it was yesterday. The GM wanted to see him because yes. he called him up. So there, there's that and he drafted him. that disconnect between GM and coach was a real thing. This year, it's more cohesive top to bottom. Players like the coach, coach likes the players, GM, coach, everybody seems to be. It's all harmony. We'll see how it works out. Man, this Are franchise you... has never lost a really talented small guy before. Okay, <laughs> you, you, you brought it up. The fourth? Um, Are there enough goals there? You guys talked to uh, Jason Weimer. Yeah. His main concern with the team. What's he doing now? He's Hunting. being Jason Weimer, being the best Jason <laughs> Weimer out there. Sea bear. Leading that's, the league in Jason Weimer. That's awesome. Like activities. Yeah, he's good. He's good you boy. guys are getting along. Good guy. Uh, his concern. How I we think, get along with everyone? And I, no, not everybody. I think for a lot of fans, can they, because you just look up the road, and yes, it's one of the most potent offenses that we've ever seen. So it's an unfair gauge, maybe. But... Huberto, obviously Manjapani had an off year. Mm-hmm. Shoulder surgery. Is there enough? Are the goals going to be? To Foley gone? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I'm, that doesn't even really like register on my radar as like things that could go wrong. I just think they were so bad on the defensive side of the puck that if you get league average goaltending, it's eight points. How many year. of those one goal losses are gone? Like 10, five? You that, missed the playoffs oh. by. You think you had one more point than Florida? Was that it was in St. Louis, right? When Markstrom just let in that awful oh god, goal. late in the third, oh. that was dreadful. But that was in like November or December, like it wasn't January, even, think, yeah. But games like that all the time. That was like the story last year. And I'm not saying season. it's all on him, but he had like a 700 save percentage on first shots of the game at some point in the spring. It was just awful. It was it's hard to do. It was almost it felt scripted. Yeah, it felt scripted. Shot. Goal, of course. It was. It was. Shots are ten nothing Calgary. They really are owning the puck. Shot scores. The Islanders have opened the scoring. Yeah. Oh, and Marshall's gonna want that one back. Like, holy fuck! How did they do this again? So with all the, I mean, it's so good to reminisce and remember these great memories. Are you very excited for October 11? Let's get get this thing going. I'm excited because it feels different. It really like, and I know that that's what they're telling you. But being there and seeing it and feeling mm-hmm. it, it actually does. Again, it's give it three weeks. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, it they, might not, but I think there's a chance that we might actually see the potential of what this team was supposed to be. 
They start with a big old road trip too after playing the home opener against Winnipeg. Yeah, like, they do a lot of times. I don't mind that group going on the road yeah. right away, to be fair. Um, Michael Backlund, captain. Thoughts? And the contract, I guess, because it's kind of... Well, I thought it was supposed to be Rasmus Anderson. Well, it depends what we That was we the week before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was a little slow on my news. Mm. Um, Feels like a shot. No. Long time coming. Should have happened three years ago. That is where we disagree on the show the most because I felt that way and Rhett and Boom have said, what if he's just not a captain? What if he's just Michael Backlund? And why wasn't he a captain earlier? And I thought that was a Daryl thing, but you don't necessarily view him as capital C captain. I just, if, if Daryl, Daryl drafted him, like if, if anybody would have thought be the guy that's who I drafted. But they captain. didn't name anyone. Um, well, exactly. That's, that's what I'm saying. I just, yeah, there wasn't a captain. Is you could have put away. the C on him. Certainly. I, I just don't, I don't, I don't think that tenure with a team automatically makes you a captain. I just view this. Is this guy our leader? On the ice, off the ice, do I do I feel I just think it's an organic thing. I don't think you can look on a well, who's played here the longest? Okay, well, he's our captain. I don't think and I that. guess in the room they feel that way, and that's an awesome. I and I hope it works out for Mike. I hope it's great. From the outside looking in, I think he's a very he's very nice, he's great in the city. I think he's a wonderful guy. I just don't know if he's a fucking right. Backland got me so we're fired up. You're god damn right, Bax. Let's go. Let me ask you this. And not every team can have that. I get that. But I just... I, Did Mark Giordano have like that? that guy. He was more of a warrior. I, he had that, more of that feel to me. Why? They're, I, I think they're almost the same personality. I don't... And I don't know... Yeah, yeah. I don't know Michael Backlund all that well, but just spending a little time... like I feel like him and Giordano are the same person. What What is... We've seen a lot of players come out in the pin report. There's a couple, but like a lot of players went well out of their way beyond the like expected complimentary stuff to say like, this was deserved. This is overdue. This is our guy. Because um, he was one of those guys leading the charge last year. You want to talk about leading the charge. It was like, we're not putting up with this stuff from Daryl. And, and if, Hey, if that was happening behind closed doors, if he was marching into Daryl's office and saying back off and be, then that's the leadership quality that you want to have in a captain. Like the Pelche thing. It, it wouldn't surprise you if that was Backlund that went in and said, this has to change. I don't think it it's was guess, him. I but mean, it's guessing, right? Well, I'm, I'm asking if that would fit or not. I know it wasn't him. Okay. But there was a lot of stuff that happened throughout the year that he's he was like, no, no more. No Moss. Yeah. And, and that's, that is I think the hard need. part for Rhett, to be honest, is that that wasn't the player Michael Backlund was when Rhett played with him. Michael Backlund in his young 20s was naive, soft, always hurt, and probably like deer in the headlights a lot. But that doesn't mean a guy can't change over 10 years and figure out what it takes to be a winner. You don't, you're not just born a leader necessarily. Sure, you have your Jonathan Taves, but other guys like a Giordano, like it takes time. It takes mentorship and watching. What does it take to win in this league? What are the habits that we need to have? I, I think it's tough for Rhett to look at the kid he played with and say, that guy's a captain? For him, he's been in a, in a room for for years and years, and have played with different captains, right? Yep. So he that's whether or not Michael was that then, he has in his mind what it is to be a captain, and doesn't see and doesn't see Backlund there, right? He talks about Brian Scrudland, Jerome, like those those types of guys. He doesn't see Backlund, and we should not be speaking for him, but I think it's fair to say. No, I think that's well. He just doesn't see yeah. it that way. I think it's less about who Mike was at twenty. And more about what he has had as a, who he's had as captains over the years, and feels like those that's captain material. Yeah, and I, I my my point is that he doesn't know the Michael Backlund now. He's he's only been in the room with the Michael Backlund that wasn't a leader. Sure, yeah, I'd let it work out. I'm happy for him. It was a nice scene the other day. You like the Family's deal? Family's there. I do like the deal. I don't think there's any risk in it. Third year would have been scary because that's four years to a. Guy that turns 35 this spring. I, I, the two year term was key for me. Perfect. Yeah. And sub 5 million. Like, you're never going to get hurt by that. You can, no. like, we talked if, about it yesterday. Red didn't think think the deal was, I, I kind of, I said it was, I felt like it was a hometown discount. And to me, that's okay. That's less than market. That's less than market. That's cat. That's you, you want to be here. That's what you need out of a cap. Okay. It's all good. Nice story. Put it, put a bow on it. It's done. Uh, 
I think for him, it's less about the term. It's the four and a half million that he sees. I asked him the day before the deal. Too much. And he said it was two times. He doesn't think it's a, he doesn't think it's a bargain. He doesn't think that's a discount in any way. Four and a half is the going rate for Michael Backlund. He might be right. Uh, If you put red on a spectrum, he's, he is at the other end of the biggest fan of back. He's not a hater, but he's, 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 he, I think the general consensus on Backlund, he would be the other side, not like a pro. Or like, eh. It's, the entire 10 years I've worked with him, it's always been like, he wants, now, if more. It was he a th- wants more. If it was a three-year deal at four and a half per, I, I, what would third you- year I, it scares me because you're just you're going to pay someone who's turning 38. I know. But it, I guess to me, it was more about the two years. It's it's both. It, I thought it was a win on dollars and term. I thought don't I, but that's why five, that's why I'm asking you if it was two. three years at four yeah. and a half, would you feel like four and a half's a deal? Say, then I'm you so would worried. Yeah, I agree. And that's so four and a half at two years is the same at three. So it's not the contract, it's the term. I, where I, where I understand if, what you're trying to say. Like I thought they got a win on both term and dollars. So I really like it. So how can it not be a win at three years at four and a half million? Because he's not worth three and a half in three years. Yeah, four and a half in three years. Yeah, thank you. Like it's because we are expecting diminishing returns as a player goes 35, 36, 37, yeah, 38. Worried, yeah. And worried. so to pay the 38 year old four and a half is much more risky than the two years before that, in my mind. Uh, is there anything else we have? Did we put you to sleep there, Frank? No, I was thinking Sorry. about just it's the easiest way to like slot in a contract ever. Like a GM told me this, and I think I've talked to you guys about this. 100k per so like if you're you're four and a half million or you should be getting 45 points or 45 points four and a half million michael backland last year is at 56 like you said probably going to diminish a bit career year but you can pretty much pencil him in for his entire career to this point for 45 and the beauty is and the cap's going to continue to go like it just it's like asset is defense too like that's that makes it even better for me it's, it's not right. like his offense is what makes them great. I think I I just don't see any risk. Yeah. Yeah, I I I think it's fine. I I do think it's a bit of a discount. I think it's when when Elliot and I'm not throw Elliot on the bus, but it's 3 at 5.5. Five, it's like Jesus. Christ. That's rich. Yeah. Man. Conroy what easy now. Settle down. And then you hear two at four. Well, yeah, that, that, that feels, feels that's about where it should be. Mm-hmm. That's about where it should He'll be. He'll hit a thousand games early next season. He mentioned that was really important too. Did he? Yep. He said to do it in one city with one franchise, a thousand games. Is a big wasn't deal. it Geo like right after in Seattle? Like that was like, uh, am I crazy? Yeah, I think he was else? at 989 when yeah. he got traded. Yeah, something or like got that. claimed. Got claimed. But, um, Back, I don't I I just think it fits. There's like a and now here's the thing with Backlund is he's changed his mind. And he actually it was funny. He said yesterday he goes I I came back from Sweden and, and I you know sat down with my wife and we talked and he said I changed my mind and they were like oh I mean uh you know I, back a little. Yeah, I decided yeah, to stay. And it was really kind of a funny slip of the tongue, but he's now going to become Craig Conroy's salesman he's like he's the recruiter now yeah do you like just, you're kind of already team sweden i don't mind that you um no i meant in terms of the guys that are in the last years of their deal yeah hey you i did it let's go do it together mm-hmm. i wonder too lindholm and shillington two swedes what the shillington thing is still it's it i know there's i want to be careful how i phrase this because I, I'm really sensitive to it. And he made a huge jump to come over here. But what's going on now? Like, is this going to come together or is it not? I mean, this is the question we ask you. It, it seems like it's crickets on all fronts here. Craig Conroy said yesterday when we asked him, uh, just here to support him. Yeah. Give him everything he needs. And they were proud that he came over here. He couldn't get on the plane last year. Now, I don't. I don't have a sense that anything's changed. It's just that he can't, he can't get over the hump. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate all around. I mean, you feel for him. He's obvious. There's obviously something he's going through. The team would love to have. Him. And he of, looks good. Like those videos. Like he looks had such a tremendous year. It was such a breakout for him. Yeah. The Flames have really gotten a shitty deal 
when it comes to younger top four defensemen that are trending in that way. Use of Alamaki, knee injury, Shillington, his situation. Adam Fox, you remember him? <laughs> that was so much an injury. Yeah. No, but again, bad, bad luck with young yeah. defensemen. It was, was an injured national psyche, I think. Yeah, is what that, that was sounds like. Nice. Yeah. Um, do you snore? I do. Of course you do. I mean, look at me. Yeah. A picture of health over here. I was guessing you snored. I just I've been throwing it out there. Being a guy of our age, that sort of thing. I just not your age. Uh, what are you older? No, he's younger than Crosby. Remember, it's the meme. Mm. Someone like uh, sent something into the the Oilers Nation text line the other day. They said, "You want to know how hard hockey writing is? Just look at Frank." Yeah, <laughs> it's like being the president. Hey, did you see Obama? God, he's aging. Yeah. Hey, God. Holy crap! Oh. Like they, they must not sleep. Outdoor dental. It's the Solea laser, the Solea laser treatment. Obviously, you know, no needles, no, that's for the dental part of it. But they've also found another use for the old Solea laser, and it is snoring. Two 15-minute treatments. Back of your, th the back of the neck, throat, soft palate. Put a little topical. Well, I mean, you can speak to it. Yeah, a little spray, zinc. Did you do it? I did. 15 minutes. Just that laser goes... And it tightens the soft palate. I'm due to go back in a couple of weeks for my second session. And I've already noticed it's like, yeah, I'm not choking, waking up at three in the morning as much. My wife. Uh, I've been trying everything. I've been on the, the tape over the mouth, the, the, the whole the, the year, jaw thing, the mm. hostage tape. The ball gag. You've tried it all. Yeah, Nothing seems to be working. Kind of into the ball gag. Leave me alone. Uh, Outdoor.dental is the website. Yes. Two treatments, 15 minute treatments. You're in, you're out, you come back. And I don't know if cure is the right word, but it, alleviates it's the snore and you're getting better sleep you're getting better quality sleep the partner. people beside you are getting better sleep if there's someone beside you maybe it's your dog i'm not sure what it is either way it is a it's an amazing technology pain-free yeah quick yeah effective yeah here's another thing if you've got dental insurance most of this thing's covered there you go that's big there you go zip -zo. dr j patel outdoor dental the uh, and of course they are a full service dental office as well. Dental implant treatment can be scary. They've got that. They use three D technology. The uh, I mean they're making yeah. crowns and stuff. They got a three right D printer there. in there that they showed yeah. us. The video is going to drop in October. It's really really cool. State of the art dentistry is yeah. a lot different than the old. This is like, not ding, ding, ding. right. I've been saying it for a while. This is not your regular dental office. They are doing things different, and uh, why not take advantage? Outdoor.dental.com. Book yourself in for a consultation or. Get after it. Do it. I know I, from my understanding, there's quite a few barn burner folk going in there and trying it out. Good on you. Support the sponsors. Get I got to make it. I'm telling you, next time I come up, make me an appointment. Perfect. Done. Dr. J. Yeah. So cup final. When you're here for the <laughs> for the cup final, we'll get you. Did not say that. Um, Time for the Pinder Report. You want to do some Pinder Report? Well, I mean. Uh, what, else? has he got to leave? We don't need to. Do you want to hang with us or what do you think? No, I actually do have to run. Yeah. Bullshit. So let's, let's, Where let's, you let's go? Bullshit. Let's say bye to Frank. We'll take a quick little break. We'll come back a, with Pinder. I got to give me a hug. I got a sandwich uh, down the street that I got to uh, uh, yeah. interview. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a deli. Uh, yeah, I got a little fat here. jokes. No, no. Ball gag just, jokes. What else you got? It's lunchtime. I'm starving. Come on. What do you, what do you worry about? Sources are saying prosciutto is on the menu. <laughs> um. Well, anything. What about Pittsburgh? Carlson comes in. Yeah, I this, got one too. This yeah. is kind of a. Get the band back together. Let's give it one more shot. You, I know you guys are pretending like you're never going to talk to me again. Oh, hey, next Tuesday. He really is hungry. Then. He's going to go. Yeah, he is hungry. Uh, real quick, Dang Vasilevsky, me. Tampa. How much trouble is that? Uh, trouble. I mean, that's a team that I thought looked really tired last year. Yeah. I, it's hard to bet against a team that has Sergachev, Hedman, Point, Stamkos, Kucherov. Like, that's your core. Yeah. But Vasilevsky was such a big part of that for a team that didn't light the world on fire last year. Yeah. They got to tread water. And I, the problem is, if you were to rank all 64 goalies in the NHL, yeah. the guy they had as the backup would be 64 and oh. not even a question. So I think their plan the whole time was to pluck a third guy off of waivers from somewhere. Yeah. Now you can do that, but. Is that enough to get you through for the first 10 weeks? Maybe. They'll, I mean, the thing about Breezebo on that team, I feel like they, they will know. I, I think that's one of those we've talked about it. That's one of the best run front offices that, that there is in the game. They'll have a good sense to what 
what goalies are going to go on waivers here in the next week to 10 days as the season starts. And if that's going to do it, then they'll, they'll try. And if it's not, then they're, yeah, they're going to have to make a deal to get something done. Big save Dave there. Maybe it's, it's, it's Calgary podcast. What's their guy, but there's three goalies here. Yeah. Dan Vladar has been an effective backup Got a piece in, for in with how he's been used, right? With with Daryl at uh, Daryl's hard on backup goalies. Is They've he? also got uh, this is news. They got Dustin Treat Wolf, that. who's you know he's got that arm that arm pump. He's got the it's in mid season form. Yeah, the cell is on point in Winnipeg. So I don't know. There's three goalies here. He's hungry. He's got to go. We can let him go. So here's the thing, and here's I think the easiest way to explain where the flames are at. I think they know that in an ideal situation, moving Dan Vladar is the play. I don't think they've had a market materialized for him and not because he's not good. It's just that no one has anyone that's had a need to doesn't really want to spend that much. Mm. And I don't think Tampa's all that different in terms of acquisition cost or cap space or both. Well, they can make the cap space work but it's acquisition cost as well Yeah, that this, I don't know why it is, but this market for whatever reason is more down on Vladar to the theme we were talking about earlier than the rest of the league is. I think he's a second round pick all day long, like without blinking. And I think 18 months ago, he was a first. Jeez. The contract is reasonable and I think the Flames know that Wolf is ready and could really use to be that guy. But that doesn't mean you just throw out Dan Vladar just mm-hmm. to do it. You try to get that second. Yeah, you try and hang on and be patient and say, you know what? He's waiver exempt. We have time. Let's keep him starting for the Wranglers, Wolf, and then let's figure it out from there. I think that's been the story of the offseason is that the offers for guys haven't been there. It was a soft market for Glenn this summer. Lindholm, Hannafin, Backland. All of them, we because we talked for a long time. And remember when the Toffoli did? Oh, it's guys, a thirty goal guy's got to be a first, first round. Yeah. It's like, ooh, a third. Ooh, that's not what we thought we were going to get. I, I think that's what it's been across the board for for a lot of those guys. But just wait. Left. Yeah. yeah, that's what, and that's that's what you do. And that's what their plan is. Yeah. But it could change. Tampa goes on five out of the gate. Maybe they are willing to pay the price, right? Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're fine. Mm-hmm. I like the approach, though. I think it beats the alternative. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out more of our content right here on the Flames Nation YouTube page. We had a bunch of great long-form interviews. You can check out some videos we've done as well outside of the studio. And, of course, if you want more writing or merchandise stuff, flamesnation.ca or nationgear.ca. Appreciate you watching.